Welcome to you all this evening. Welcome, Hannes. Great to have you online. Thank you, Scott, and it's great to be online. And welcome, everyone. <laughs> Guys, uh, I know we've got a number of people logging in, and that's our policy is to always start on time. For those of you who've never used a webinar before, fantastic. You'll see that there's a little box in the right hand corner. If you want to ask me any questions, then if you literally just put your hand up and ask questions, I see that we've already got a few that have come through here, which is great. And if you want to put your hand up, if you've got a microphone and we've got time at the end, we will log through. But in the meantime, I'm going to be able to ask the questions in terms of what's happening. I see there are some questions there. I want to get going and then I, um, depending on how the evening goes, we'll be able to interact with those questions in terms of where we're looking at. So firstly, Dr. Anastraya, awesome to have you online this evening. Let's Talk Property is really a new interface where we want to go out and we want to learn from the best, basically. And I've got the privilege of being a great friend of Hannes's and I, you know, have invested a lot in property. I went on his course back in 2002 and 2002, 2003, and I'd been on a lot of courses overseas in London that were charging anywhere from 7,000 to 10,000 pounds for a day's property course. And really, when I went on this course, it just it just made so much sense to me. It was all about managing the risk and 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 being able to design and understand the growth and what it was actually happening. And from there, we 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 built a friendship. And I really approached Hannes last year actually to say, look, you know, I've got some properties. Is it is it, are they a good investment? Aren't they? And it, it wasn't the first time. If you remember, Hannes, I actually did it with Atlantic Beach back many years ago when I had that nice house on a golf estate, and you kept telling me it wasn't a great investment. Well, it turned out not to be a great investment. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, I remember uh, Scott, and and that's why uh, I think the system is so great, uh, and I hope that we're going to help a lot of people tonight. So, really, ladies and gentlemen, that that was the idea, and uh, I I had a chat with with Hannes. I don't know, we've been talking about it actually for a couple of months, and unfortunately, everyone's been very busy. But but we've put it together tonight, and the whole intention tonight is to answer some some pretty critical questions and to, to be able to get you guys the answers so that you'll be able to do it. So without further ado, I, I want to move on. We always try and start off with, with an overview in terms of what's happening with world economics, South African economics, the global property, South African property, etc., etc. Now, I'm very aware that tonight you haven't come here to sit and learn about economics and what's happening globally because we want to understand from Hannes, you know, what his skills and strategies are. Because I think the most important thing with Hannes is and I learned this and, and, and really made a lot of sense to me. In 2002, when I went on Hannes' course, I realized that the principles he was teaching would actually work in a growing market as well as a down market. But at the time, I had nothing to be able to base that on. And I think we'll all agree that over the last three years, the market's been very tough. And a lot of the principles that have been taught in the market, both locally and internationally, have been able to be found to be flawed. And I love that saying, that you know, many turkeys can even turkeys can fly in a hurricane. You know, at the end of the day, when the property market's rising, everyone looks clever. Every estate agent, everyone that's teaching property, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think the most important thing is that Hannes has actually made his money out of property, retiring at the age of 37, and you did that both in a rising cycle as well as a falling cycle, which is very, very important to you. So. Just, just before I move on and ask Hannes' opinion on where he thinks the market's going to go, I just want to give you some, some stats here. And if anyone's interested, get hold of me. It was a financial mail story. It was a six-page story, a very in-depth story that takes into account both global and local conditions and market conditions. And just some of the key things that I think are important. It's now taking 19 weeks where you put your property on, on the market, 19 weeks to actually find a buyer and only 15% of sellers are getting their asking price. According to an FNB survey, in which estate agents reported that in the first quarter of 2011, 18% of visitors who went to show, to show houses were actually serious buyers. Another one that, that I thought was interesting was, Erwin Ruder said, I predict the residential property down cycle would last seven years, and that we're only three years into it. De Toy, who's the, the economist at ABSA, says that house price trends indicate nominal growth of about 1.5% this year. And FNB's John Lewis says he's even um, believes there's going to be less growth. He believes about 0.2%. If you look here, they basically say Lewis says households are under pressure, and this is because of rising inflation, the prospects of interest rate hikes later this year, and a slowing pace of wages. 
the ratio of household debt to disposable income was 77.6% in the fourth quarter of last year, only modestly down from 82%, but that there's going to be a major problem if we have an interest rate hike cycle, which they are starting to expect towards the end of this year. The last two things that I think are important is that the Reserve Bank believes that 9.4% of all bank mortgages are actually in trouble in terms of, so 9.4% of all the residential mortgages amongst the big five banks, and the total amount is 8 105 billion rand with the lion's share being held by Standard Bank, then ABSA, then FNB, then NetBank, and then Investec. And the very last thing that I thought was interesting was in 2010, I learned a long time ago with regards to supply and demand that it was very, very important. We've learned this a lot overseas. If you look at the American market, they, from 2004, one in four houses that was being built in America was actually unoccupied. In Ireland at the moment, one in five houses is actually standing empty. Spain has similar problems. We all know what's happened in Dubai. So I think supply and demand is a very important factor, fundamental to take into account. And something that I found fascinating said here, in 2010, the bank found that Karting experienced a net outflow reflected in the net migration. So minus 1.1% in population growth in Karting. And so were seven of the other provinces. The only one that was in positive was the Western Cape with a net migration of 10.6%. So that's very interesting when one looks at what the long-term future is, supply and demand, both for buyers and sellers and rental. And, you know, when, when you look into it, I ask you, Hannes, well, what do you think based on all those stats and figures? And, you know, do you think the market's going up or down, left or right? What, what are your thoughts? Do you really want to know, or must I tell you from my master economics point of view? Look, at the end of the day, I think everyone bases a lot of their buying or selling based on emotion, and then they, what they do is they read a lot of these type of reports and press reports and economic reports, and it, uh, it confuses them, and um, or as, as you often say, confoculates them. But um, what, what are your thoughts, basically? How do you make decisions based on all this? Uh, information that's in the press at the moment. Okay, first of all, uh, Scott, I do not read the press because I think the people that writes all those articles have got a vested right to confoculate us, as you just said. Confoculation is when you do not know that you don't know what you're supposed to know, which means that it's a very dangerous uh, mental state to be in. And the reason why they confoculate us is so that they can have the power over us and so that they can take our money. That's my personal view. Um, the moment that you start working with principles, then the economy uh, of any country and even the world's economy becomes totally, totally irrelevant. Um, if you take the laws that are in existence, if you take an apple and you throw it up, you know that it's coming, going to come down in good times and it's going to come down in bad times. Uh, there's no um, what is happening with uh, the winds and the magnetic fields and blah, 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 all the scientific uh, stuff. So uh, I do not look at, and I'm so glad that, I, that I've made that decision many, many years ago that I'm not going to look uh, what these clever people are trying to tell me. I want to find out the smallest common denominator, and that is what are the principles. So the moment that we understand certain investment principles, uh, when the market goes up, there's good properties to buy, and there are bad properties to buy. If the market comes down, there are good properties to buy, and there are bad properties to buy. Unless you're going to have a system, you will not know which is a good or bad property. And the reason for that is property has got nothing to do with location, 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 and with capital growth. Capital growth, as far as I'm concerned, is a, is a phantom concept that was cocked up by the financial institutions uh, that is based on inflation uh, to confoculate uh, the masses. Uh, that's my point of view. So uh, the moment that you've got a system, that system should withstand uh, the test of time. And if it can do that, I've started in, in 84. In 84, the interest rates were 24%. Uh, they were doom and gloom and the whole tutti. In 87, when the stock market crash was actually the first time that I really invested according to this program that I'm going to show you tonight. And I mean, it was just, uh, it was a fabulous decision that I've made at that point in time. And I've been through a couple of cycles. I think you will know that in 2004, 2005, 
when every so-called guru jumped on the bandwagon, predicted capital growth till the end of time, and that that's what it's all about. I said, this is how to invest in property. It's the same way that I invested in 87, and it's the same way that I'm going to invest, and my children will invest in 50 years, and they can, my grandchildren will invest in 50 years' time from now. And uh, yeah, so it's a simple system. I do not, I can't comment uh, on on the economics and what's going to happen, what's not going to happen, and I'm 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 really I'm not interested in that. So just just on that note, I mean, moving along, Hannes, I've uh, showed you this, and I know we're going to talk about it in a little bit of detail, but uh, I actually got this off Barclays Capital, and it actually talked about their best assets over the last ten years. So it took into account everything that their high net worth individuals were investing in. And you'll see there that gold was the best performing asset, 323% return, oil 214%, fine wine 178%, property 109%. So very interesting enough over the last 10 years where, we, where we've had a property boom and bust in the UK and a stock market boom and bust. The stock market is down 14%, the listed market is up 8 to 9%, gold 323%, and direct property is 109%, but that's also not taking gearing into account in terms of where you're looking at. Now, I know we're going to go into this a little bit more detail, Hannes, but just interesting where property sits amongst the different asset classes and what you can and can't, um, what has basically happened from the last 10 years taking Barclays Capital as a source. So, without further ado... Now, can I interrupt you? Please, yeah. Let's go. Okay, I've done a couple of calculations while you were speaking. You see, um, first of all, uh, let's quickly ask, I see there's quite a few people uh, on the line. Is 323% uh, a good or a bad investment? Now, first of all, uh, 10 years ago they would not tell us to invest in gold. So it's very, very easy afterwards to say, but you should have invested in gold and you should have put all your money in gold. But unless you had invested right in selling gold uh, 10 years ago, I can almost 100% guarantee you that no one, no financial advisor uh, would say be in, in gold 100%. And if they've said that you should be in gold, it's this old thing that they say you should put all your eggs in different baskets and you should not have more than approximately 10% in gold. Uh, that's the normal sentiment. Now, um, at least if we were in gold, 323%, can we quickly have a, a show of hands of, of people and they can use the, the type message here, uh, yes or no? Is it good or bad investment? Can I have a couple of so guys, if you could just uh, tell us, Gustav says, depends, Hannes, is that 323% average growth per year or is it over the 10 years? It's over the 10 years. Leon, no. Grant, Bon Webb's good. Nicholas, bad. Fran, no. Maggie, no. Uh, and Cooley, no. Uh, no, you see, I'm, I'm sitting with a, with, a, with a hell of a problem. All these no's are my, my students, so <laughs> perhaps my sh students should not comment. Okay, so from now on, my students do not comment. <laughs> um, because, uh, let me tell you, uh, the average person will look at this and say, Farka, this is good, you know, but I've done a calculation. If I compare that to compounded interest, which normally we use as the basis to, to, to see if investment is good or bad over a period of time, I'm coming to 15.5%. And perhaps I, I, I'm going to do in the uh, presentation, I'm going to show you what's a 15.5%. And that is a flippin', flippin' bad investment if you want to become rich, my friend. There's no way that you can become rich in 20 or even 30 years getting a 15%, which is the best investment that they advise uh, currently, uh, according to this uh, huge Barclays capital story that you've just dished up here. And, and, and that makes me, me uh, frustrated when, when I see figures like this and, and people fall for this because financially they are ignorant and they are kept ignorant by the financial institutions and the governments, uh, and I'm not talking only in, in terms of South African government, but all ruling parties around uh, the world because it's in their interest to keep the masses ignorant because that's how you control them and that's how you keep them poor. They say they want to, to for us to, to become 
uh, a better and to improve. But it's a lie. You only can have that power if you can control the poor. And this is what's happening in, in the world. And that is why there are so few really rich people, because these rich people have discovered that you cannot trust the systems. Uh, you have to know the systems and you have to understand how they work, because otherwise you're not going to get aid. And uh, Scott, that's only my point of view. Um, oh, look, I mean, Hannes, from, from my side, <laughs> it always amazes me how passionate you are about this. Tell us a little bit about where did this all start? You know, why? Um, because at the end of the day, I think what you're pointing out very, very cleverly and very importantly for people here is that it doesn't matter if it's gold, oil, fine wine, property, etc., etc. You've got to have a system to be able to analyze it. And then you get to property and you've got to have a system between different properties. But tell us all, where it all started. And, and then I'm... I'm going to actually um, change the, the presenter over to yourself so that we can start to look and, and you can take us through a path of, of where it came from and, and why you did it and, and, and why you got the results that you've had. Okay, uh, thank you, Scott. Um, so, will you hand over and yep. let me take the controls this side? Anyway, you should be, uh, should we come to your side? I've accepted it. Okay, uh, you can tell yeah. me when you see you're the up, screen. You're up on my side, yeah, you're fine. Okay, All right. Uh, Scott, it, it, it basically happened in, in uh, or it started this whole thing. I was a financial planner or financial advisor with one of the biggest insurance companies, in, uh, well, the biggest one in South Africa, year in 84. And um, in, in 84, uh, something happened, and I'm not going to go into it, but I realized, but flip it, this system, even though I think I'm working for commission, I'm working for commission, but they write out the check. And they're going to have control over me for the rest of my life uh, uh, because I've got a hell of a lot of debt. And um, a car debt, uh, they gave security for uh, the two cars that I had at that point in time and for my house. And that evening I went home and I sat down with Tanya, my wife, and I said to her, to her um, we've got a serious problem. This. I, I, I'm beginning to understand what is happening with the system because this system is going to keep us bondage as slaves for the rest of our lives. We need to understand how this thing works so that we can get out. So initially when I started this whole journey, uh, it was for me to figure out how to get out of the system, which luckily I did uh, before the age of 37. Okay, but uh, one of the things that I then did was to analyze my, my, my property. Now, in 84, uh, you will not remember it, Scott, because you're too young. <laughs> I don't think you were in the property market at that point in time. But in 84, the interest rates, okay. uh, in 84, the interest rates, the prime interest rate were 24%. So that, that day or over a period of days, we decided that we're going to, to first of all, pay off the debt. And luckily, uh, because of the strategy that I followed in... Uh, Three years later, in 87, uh, all our debts were paid. And then an amazing thing happened because I wanted to understand and I wanted to know, but what was the growth on my investment? Because as a financial advisor and planner at that stage, I knew what gold was and uh, endowment policies and smooth and link policies and unit trust and shares and you name it. And with hindsight, it's very easy. But I could not find property because... The figures that they're giving us and the figures that you showed us just now, that is only taking into consideration the average capital growth. And when I started to try to figure out what, because I've seen at that point in time, I could clearly see, but there were not only one criteria or one variable. There were a lot of different variables because it's the investment on my, the growth on my investment. So I started fiddling around with a with a Excel spreadsheet, actually a Lotus spreadsheet those days, and I discovered that there were many. And by in '87, I discovered there were actually 27 different variables, and each and every one of those variables plays a role in determining not only the growth but also the risk, because risk and growth is inherent in each other. And our function is to to manage the risk down and the growth up. So that to me was, was mind-boggling, but when I analyzed my property, I discovered that my property outperformed any other investment 
that I had at, up to that point. And I made, uh, well, I haven't had a, a lot of investments. The only big investment that I had was my property, but I could compare it to other investments at that stage. So I decided now that I'm sitting with this surplus uh, uh, income, I'm going to invest in properties. And then I started looking at, at, at properties. So I used the same program, but now I did a forecast. Uh, I did a forward projection to try to figure it out, and that's normally the way that the insurance companies and financial institutions work. But then I, I, I could see that the, the market goes up and down the whole time. So I decided to work on a, on a moving average of 10 years. And the reason why I did that was because in a 10-year cycle, you'll get ups and downs. As now, in a 10-year cycle, you find the ups and the downs. So you smooth it out to, to try to eliminate as much risk as possible. And I then started to analyze properties, and I discovered that by far the majority of residential properties were not a good investment. But the moment that you've got a tenant in it, it starts turning. But even that, some properties are definitely better buys than other properties. And basically, that is how it started. Uh, and, and, and then I discovered the, the real power uh, of property, uh, Scott. Um, yeah, that's that's how it started. So I mean, basically, Hannes, if I'm, you know, we look, we're not in the heyday like it was five years ago, where you you could buy three properties at any one time. So you were trying to buy as many as you could, and blah blah blah. And and people are in a situation now where they're trying to decide if they should sell their property or whether they should buy. I mean, there's a couple of questions here: should I sell my home and then buy, you know, another investment property? But but more importantly, let let's just say that I was in the market. And I was looking to buy one property right now. Uh, how do I analyze a property investment? Because we all know that there's loads of property out there, supposedly repos and all that sort of stuff. But at the end of the day, what you just told me is that I've got to be able to have a system. I've got to be able to calculate it. And then once I've done that, I can start to choose between different properties and possibly even different investments. So, I mean, how do I do that? Okay, now I've got a small problem, Scott, because my computer is hanging. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> okay. Right. The only way that you can do it, uh, Scott, I'm going to carry on and see. Uh, perhaps he's just thinking a little bit. But the only way that you that you can actually do it is by by analyzing the property. So you have to take all the emotion uh, out of the equa equation. And uh, unfortunately, because we believe. Uh, there we are, and now I'm seriously glad. <laughs> you got to love uh, technology at the best of times. Yes, it makes me feel alive, and that is not where I want to be. I want to be in the presentation. Sorry for that. We've got uh, the property pro screen up at the moment. Okay, I, I, I want to get to the, the, the presentation itself, because if I'm in the presentation, I've prepared something because I knew what you would ask me beforehand, which makes it a lot easier for me. <laughs> and I thought that is going to help so that I can give a lot of value. So I, yeah, yeah, it's slow. Okay, let's see if it's going to work this way because I'm not getting to where I want to be. Okay, what's happening? We've discussed that one, how to analyze a property investment. Uh, I want to do a combination, uh, uh, Scott, how to calculate like, the risk. Uh, uh, there's a, a couple of questions that, that, you, that you sent to uh, the database uh, and in the email um, where you said that uh, you're going to ask these questions to me. So <laughs> I knew what questions you would ask me. Okay, so um, in, in terms of the market, okay, we've done that one. Uh, how to analyze, we've done, I'm going to do this, how the risk, I'm going to do that. Uh, I've got a strategy, uh, and, and let, let's, let's get back to that. If you look at the Wealth Creator Strategy or the Wealth Creator's Investment Strategy, uh, and this is something that I want each and everyone that's on the webinar tonight uh, to take note, because the moment that you understand this, the moment that you understand this, you're going to understand that 
property is just a investment vehicle. Property is not good and property is not bad. The person that makes the decision to invest in property or decision to not invest in property, that decision is going to be good or bad. It's, it's not the property, it's the jockey. Because the jockey is going to make the decision. Property is just a vehicle, just as shares are the vehicle, a business is a vehicle and gold is a vehicle. It's vital that we understand this. Now, the Wealth Creators Investment Strategy says, and this is my definition, I've got a trademark on this. It's the intelligent use of limited resources to go from where you are to where you want to be in the shortest possible time with the least amount of risk. And I, I really want to spend a little bit of time just to, 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 to show you and the rest of the, the students the, the power of, of this. It's the intelligent use. Now, the moment that I hand my money over to any financial institution or guru or expert or whatever they want to call them, then suddenly the intelligence is not with me anymore. And I can prove to you that the people that manage most people's money are definitely not intelligent. And let me tell you why I'm saying this. And I know there's a hell of a lot of financial planners and CFPs and, and who, but I'm telling you that the system teaches them to say to us what the system wants us to hear. In other words, it's not our intelligence, it's the system's intelligence. And the moment that I break that in, in terms of the formula for riches, and I cannot take control to risk my manage my risk down and my growth up, I'm breaking the formula. And the moment that I do that, I've got a 100% guarantee that you will not be rich ever in your life. And I've got more than 4,200 case studies to, pro to, to prove that. And if there's anyone tonight on this webinar that can prove me wrong and can prove me that by using the system, not as a business, but as, a, as, as investment, what they tell you, and that will guarantee you retirement within a 10-year or so period, then please, please come and see me. And I, I need to have that information in order to give it. Otherwise, I'm busy telling a lie. But it's intelligent use. The only ways that you can have the intelligent if you manage and control that investment. And the only way that you can have that intelligence is by having the skill level and the systems to be able to manage your investment. Okay, so that's the intelligence side. The limited resources, the limited resources that we've got is in the different financial levels that we are, is always money. Money is a limited resources because of our skill level. Even if you've got 10 million, then you could have had 20 million. And if you've got 20 million, you could have a billion. And if you've got a billion, you can have 5 billion. In other words, it's always a limited, and that depends on your skill. But another factor that comes into play, another resource, is called time. So time and money. We do not have forever to invest in order to become financially free, because the majority of people that I deal with wants to become financially free as soon as possible. Therefore, I say, it's the intelligent use of limited resources, the money and the time, to go from where you are financially to where you want to be, which in most people's uh, cases will be financial freedom, in the shortest possible time, in 10 years or in f 5 years, right? Not, not 40 years the way that they tell us you can become financially free if you invest 10 to 20% of all your income for 40 years. They want to have you in the cycle and in the system and keep you a slave for the next 20 or uh, 40 years plus it, with the least amount of risk. They tell us you must take risk and I'll show you later on why they say this. And the higher the risk, the higher the growth and you must have money to make money. That's all one huge big lie if you invest according to the Wealth Creators Investment Strategy. I hope that makes a little bit of sense uh, to you, Scott, and to the people that's on the webinar. Look, it definitely does to me, but um, my question to you is, I mean, how, how would I use that with regards to property, basically? Okay, now I'm going to show you something that is going to blow your mind, and we are in the hanging mode again. I've been, I've been joking with you for a while that uh, that uh, computer from the 1980s, it's time to get a new one. 
Luckily, it's not from the 1980s, but... Um, okay, I've got... Uh, let, let's get practical. Uh, can I... Uh, I know that you, you gave me these values, uh, Scott. So, let, let's play around, if, if, if I may. The first property that we're going to analyze is in Win, Win, Winster West, Randburg, uh, and that's valued at 420,000. Uh, then the second one is 500,000, that's in President Mitterrand, and then Pikunut, which is a, a top uh, class, and this is one of the cheapest pro uh, properties there, I think, at 1.5 million. Those were properties, three properties that you gave me not a long uh, time ago, and you said, please do an evaluation, uh, remember them. Yep, yep, nice spot on. Okay, so let's go to the property pro program, and I, I'm quickly going to show you what I've done. Winster West, uh, over the IRR over five year period, 45.98, the next one, a president, uh, 41.919. Uh, can you see it? Yeah, yeah. Pico yeah. at 33%. Okay, now taking that into consideration, I'll take you into the program now so that we can have a, a better understanding of that. I want to show you something. A property one, if you've invested in property one and you had the money, in five years' time you would receive, in terms of the projected growth that, that I've taken, and we're going to discuss that, 263,000. If you invested in property two, you would have a 357, and in property three, 1.6 million. Here's a question, Scott. If you had the money, in which property do you think you would invest? Well, look, at face value, <laughs> the 1.6 million one looks the most exciting, yep. but uh, having known you for a long time, I know that there's a lot more that I need to take into account. I know you know know me and I, I knew that you'd ask this question. So I've prepared a little plus button there. You see, if we look at this, we only look at the capital growth, but we do not take the risk into consideration. So let's take the risk into consideration. If you've got 1,180, and I'll show you where I get these figures from, it would give you 2,263 uh, at 1,800, uh, 300, and 10,000 for 1.6 million. That immediately starts confusing us, will you agree that the person that has to invest 10,565 uh, 10, has got a far bigger monthly risk than a person that has to invest 1,180 rand? Well, certainly. So definitely if uh, you've got a couple of months with no tenants and you've got to come up with that sort of money. Now, can I show you something, Scott, that is going to make this thing so easy that that anyone, anyone but anyone, if you've got a grade 6, you'll be able, my children when they were in grade 6 could understand what I'm going to show you now. Okay. Everything boils down to only one thing and that is the growth, the IRR, the internal rate of return. So if we look at the higher the IRR is, the less the risk is in comparison to the projected growth that you're going to get. In other words, the first one is 45, 41 and 33 percent. Now. In order to, to, to compare apples with apples, what we need to do is the following. If you invest in paper assets, I don't think in a 10-year term on average you're going to get 12%, but if you do, you're going to get the, the, the 1,000 Rand will become worth 230,000 uh, more or less. Does that make uh, sense to you, uh, Scott? Uh, yeah, this I is think. according to Excel. Perfect. There you can see the little formula that I've used. Okay. Now, if you've invested in property one, a thousand rand, and now it gets a little bit more tricky, that's why I've got the Property Pro uh, Home Study course. If the assumption is that you've invested a thousand rand per month each and every month and in equal installments, and we all know that it's not going to work that way, but this is assumption. For 10 years at 45%, it would give you 2,351. If you've invested a thousand rand, which is the scarce, the, the limited, uh, 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 resources that we're talking about. At 41%, it's 1.6 million. Huge difference between the two. If you've invested in property three at the average growth of 33% over a 10 year, it's 944. Can you see that, that simply on face value, property three looked at the best investment, but my resources are limited. In other words, I can buy almost 10 of these properties, right? 
uh, well, uh, at least five of these properties to compare to that property. If I look back, this property cost 1,100, so divide 10,500 by 1,100, and that's how many of these properties I can buy. And I know one of the questions that you've asked or, uh, and said is, how many properties, and everyone started buying properties. In my property courses, I say to people, it's not how many properties you've got. You know, people would brag, I've bought five and 10 and 50 and, and 70 properties. It's got to do with the growth and the risk that is attached with it. So I could have bought like five of these properties and um, uh, five of these properties, sorry, for the same amount. So it's the growth that's going to determine what's going to happen. Does that make sense? No, so no, everything no, boils down question. to the growth. Right. Now, so let's go and have a look quickly at the Property Pro program. And I'm just going to show you one property, if I may. Uh, okay. Will that be okay? Yeah. Because we're going to run out of time. I'm going to tackle on face value here, which I think is going to be the best value. It, it may not be because I have to go through everything that I'm teaching you in the course because otherwise there's no way that I can tell you if the property is good or bad. So you have to take all 27 factors into consideration. I have a lot, but not all of them. Um, so let's see if I can get this thing going. That's that specific property, 420,000. Uh, I've made an assumption that it's going to cost me 20,000 Rand for costs that I, that I did not take into consideration. The interest rate uh, option, uh, I'm going to say 12%. And immediately people sh will say, but it's high. But I'm working on a 10-year moving average, right? Um, so it's a 12% over a specific period of time. The inflation rate, I'm going to take it 9%. Again, people are going to say it's high. But I promise you, if you're South African and you listen to me, you know that the government is busy lying to you to tell you that the inflation rate. That's for the average person. The person that is listening to me, yeah, inflation rate is higher than the so-called 3 4% that the government tried to, to tell us. The capital growth rate is 12%. In other words, I'm not 100% sure if this is really the case. I've made an assumption that we're going to outperform over the 10 year. At the moment, we know that we're in a shrinking market, and I suspect that for the next couple of years, um, it's going to be very difficult even to beat inflation, whatever the inflation rate is going to be. So we're sitting with a 3% real return. I've taken some monthly expenses into consideration. The tax, tax I said uh, there's not going to be a tax uh, option. Uh, the rentals, you gave me the rentals of 4,200 Rand. I said there's a vacancy of 8%. And basically that starts making up. I didn't show you all the variables. But then I say do the analysis, right, the assessment. And that's the 45.98. And I just want to show you that's the 45.98 that I'm referring to. Uh, are you with me so far? No, because you clearly, yeah, no, 100%. Okay. And in the beginning, is 1,180. And I said, in this slide, it's the 1,180. OK, just, to, just so that you know where we are uh, at, at present. But now, let's start playing around with that property, uh, Scott. Because I know that there's no ways that property did not sell for 420,000 Rand, if I remember correctly. Uh, I just want to find out what it sold for. That property went for 280,000 Rand. Uh, am I correct? Yep. OK. So now we have to redo it. In other words, I'm going to get a property, and then I'm going to start analyzing this until I get the growth that I want out of this thing. And we said that was for 280,000. So and I'm going to say that the market value is also 280,000. Can you see what happens? The banks will tell us the market value is 420,000 just because they were stupid four years or two years ago in 2007, 2008 to give this person a valuation and a bond of, let's say, 420,000. If you can remember correctly, in 2004, I said, just because other people are stupid does not mean that we, we should be stupid. We do. There's intrinsic value in each and every prop, uh, property. And unless you know how to determine the intrinsic value, you are following the masses. We know that the masses are wrong. How do I know it? I just look at stats. Do you know that of all the people in South Africa that retires, at the age of 65, 1% will be rich, 7% will be financially independent. 1% will be rich. In other words, the masses are definitely not clued up. 
And just because everyone else is doing something does not mean that you should do it. Right. Now, I know that at this stage there may be a hell of a lot of people that is dropping this webinar, but that's okay. They're going to suffer for the rest of their life, and I can guarantee it, and I do not want that to happen. And that's the reason why we've got the Wealth Creators University, and that's the reason why I'm giving people. This same program is the one that I've used in 87. It's the same one that I showed you in 82, 83 when you did the course, Scott. It's the same one that I'm still advising, and it will be the same one because the formula for riches is built into this program. It's the same one that we're going to use in 20 years from now. It's the same one that I use if I want to invest in countries like America or in England or in uh, Europe or in Australia. It's exactly the same principle. Okay, so by changing that, let's see what's going to happen. Just by getting a, a more a, a feel for the program, it's 72.12%. Uh, you see it? Let's assume that we can get a 72%. I'm not saying that we're going to get it. Let's assume that we can get it. If that is a 72%, and perhaps, yeah, let me, let me change it here, sorry. I just want to, to do this and then go back and then go back here. If I can get this at the 72%, I want to show you what's busy happening. Now, remember, it's not the property anymore because there's a heck of a lot more than just one property over the 10 year. There's a roll in and the ceiling of complexity and the Mercedes principle and all the principles that I teach you. But that investment at a 72% is going to give you 18 million Rand. Is that making sense, Scott? Now, no, perfect, let yeah. me show you something before we carry on. All right. If you've got a 62%, which is 8 million, how much money must you invest in paper assets, endowment policy or unit trust if it's going to give you a 12%, you have to invest 35,000 Rand per month. That's the equivalent of a person that knows and that's got the skill set and that has done the training. Maybe it takes you a day or two, even a week, to learn how the program or the system works to give you this. Now, let's change this to 72% and then you're going to make a backflip. Because it's 18 million, for you to get 18 million, if you hand your money over to someone that's going to give you a 12% uh, after tax return, we're talking in terms of a 78,000 rand per month. This is why the, the, the financial institutions will tell you, you must have money to make money. It's a lie. They want your money, and by doing that, they're going to keep you a slave for the rest of your life. I, I, I really hope that that makes sense. Now, let's start playing around with this property. You see, there are so many things that we can do with it. Let's change the interest rate because this is based and it's assumption and let's assume that the, the, uh, the prime rate with 12%. What would happen if I can organize 1% better than prime, just 1% better than prime? The moment that I do that, this is how quick I'm getting to an answer uh, regarding this whole investment. So now suddenly it goes up to 78%. So if I look at this one and I say, okay, 78% just to give you a comparison, what that 6% uh, difference will be, it's the difference between a 29 million and the 18, th uh, 18 million. Now, immediately, the majority of people will look at this and say, but it's impossible. Scott, you know that a couple of years I did, uh, uh, took up a, a bargain or a challenge and I said to people, I will invest in property, increase my passive income by 100,000 Rand per month. Um, in a hundred months, I, I I took that up to 119,000 within 94 days. I took up a, another challenge where I was to invest a thousand rand, and I turned that uh, it, the total investment turned out to be 79 cents. But that was a different story, not 100 percent in property. And I turned that into more than 10 million in two years and three months. So it's because we've got the skill set that we can do this. Now, anyone that hasn't got the skill set and that can't get to a 72 percent will never be able to see the 18 million and the 29 million. Right. And the way to do it is simply to learn how the system works and then to get the fundamentals right, which we do in the Property Pro course, so where you can learn how these things work, what's the negative, what can influence the risk. Now, an amazing thing happens. The moment that we start doing this, the risk starts to turn. Instead of 1,100 Rand, now it's only 553. But now, 
it's not costing me that money anymore. I'm receiving that money simply because I've got the skill sets as God. Does that make any sense to you whatsoever? No, 100%. Uh, and I mean, I think the, the important thing is, as you said, is that once you've got these skills, you could possibly teach them to other people. I know there's a lot of property people online tonight, and estate agents as an example, and if they could show their clients are just saving 1% on their bond and what an impact that would have, it's going to make such a difference to their clients as well as themselves, basically. Yeah, Scott, I can't believe that each and every... Uh, uh, let's call it a state agent or a state agent that wants to have that that difference. Do not use something like this or, or this program specifically because they can immediately uh, because when I started looking at properties in '87 when I went to uh, state agents and they started showing me around, they were messing me around. I was looking for investment property. I was not looking for a property to stay in. I wanted my money to grow, but they did not have a program like this. Okay, so. Can you imagine what, what happens when a state agent comes to you and says, uh, listen, I've got these properties, these are the criteria, I know your criteria, uh, or perhaps they do not know your criteria, but, but this is the return that you can get on this property. And then do a simple calculation like this. Uh, in a couple of years ago, a state agent, and maybe he's even on the line tonight, right, came to me and he said, honest, I've got 32 properties. All 32 properties adhere to your criteria. Do you want to have a look at them? I look, have a, had a look at them. I bought all 32 properties one go, one sale. I didn't bargain a cent with him because he showed me and he did the homework for me. 32 individual properties. It's not a, a sectional title or something like that. 32 individual properties that he got for me. I bought all 32 properties one go. I didn't bargain a cent on his commission. Not a cent. Can you imagine the, the power of this? Because if I can get a property at my criteria that I want, I'm not going to bargain with, in, in terms of the commission because that person that brought that property to me deserved every single cent because he has saved me a hell of a lot. And that growth that I got those days on the property, the real growth outperformed the expectation that I had, even now with the downside. It, it outperforms. There's no ways that I... Well, I'm, I'm glad and thankful that he, that he gave me that property and, and br brought me those properties. And it's, it's a simple example of, of how powerful stuff like this is. But now, here's the thing. The moment that you have got this program and your estate agent tells you something, you can immediately verify to see. Because it's so easy to jippo the system. Let me jippo this system to you quickly, can I? And just show you something. Okay. Perfect. I've got uh, I've got millions of questions coming through here uh, when you get a chance as well. I I take this to fifteen percent. Remember, we we stagging instead of twelve percent. Just by doing that small. Now, normal people do not know how, where to get this growth and and where to get it. We call this the fundamentals, which is all part of the property pro program, right? They don't know where to get it, but it's so easy once you know where to get it. But look at what's the difference. Now it looks like 83. So if you go and to do the analysis, you're going to say, flipping 83%, this is, uh, where are we, 44 million, million. I want to take that property. But you should perhaps never have taken that property because he, he inflated one of the variables. You, you must make sure that you understand where the variables come from and, and how the variables work. Otherwise, there's no ways. In other words, I cannot trust an estate agent even if the estate agent has got this program and I've got the program myself. I have to take full responsibility because it's my life, it's my future, and my children and my grandchildren will pay the penalty for me not taking the responsibility today, if that makes any sense to you at all. That does. Put, honestly, I've got a lot of questions here. Um, I know, I know we wanted to move on in terms of uh, whether I should sell a property. Do you want to, do you want to go through them first and then to, to come back or, or how do you want to do it? Uh, as an example. Okay, how much time do, how much time do we have, uh, Scott? Are uh, we, we time we, constrained we, or not? No, we're okay for time. There's just some important ones okay. like, um, like Jason Owls. Let's go for it. Are those properties uh, cash or bonded? Those 32 properties that you bought? They were bonded, but I've done a, a structure. 
in, in other words, um, immediately, uh, let, let, let me give you a bigger picture. At that point in time, there are certain criteria that I taught you and 10,000 plus other students from the beginning. I had the Mercedes principle, and according to the Mercedes principle, you cannot invest more than a third of your money in any uh, growth investment. Uh, you remember that, Scott. Yep. Okay, so even though they were not this new credit act, even though the new credit act was not uh, applicable at that point in time, I already at year two that principle. In other words, you never ever have to break it. The, the reason why people break the new credit act and can't get more bonds and stuff is because they do not know how to get that kind of growth that we were talking about. And all those properties gave me a better growth than that, but I don't want to go into that. So first of all, I had to adhere to exactly the same rules and regulations that anyone else had to. I structured it in such a way, uh, and I haven't showed you the full structuring tonight, uh, because that's not part of what I want to, to show you, but uh, I've structured it in such a way that those properties did not cost me a single cent, right, out of my own pocket. I used the bank's money, I could prove the, 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 uh, the income to the bank, in, in other words, it was like an a average person that bought those pro properties. Now, here's another thing, if I was not at the financial level that I was at that point in time, the banks would never approved a bond on 33 properties for me. Does that make sense? No, I but the that. first time that I used this program, I bought one property. I, I bought one property until the growth was such and my income was such that I could go for, for the next one. So people want to jump the gun. Instead of learning the skill, how, to, how it all works and give themselves time, they want immediately the second and third because they know they're going to run out of, of time, uh, Scott. They know that the average property will not give that kind of growth to them. I hope it makes sense. It and I hope that there, there's a lot of questions, honestly. I'm going to keep most of them till then, but just a couple that are pertinent now. There was another question here that said, please explain the projected value in more detail. The projected value is, uh, if you go to any insurance company or financial institution, and you want to invest a thousand rand, they're going to give you a future value. So the future value is, let's say, 10 years from now on, and let's assume you've got a thousand rand, they're going to say that unit trust, on average, that's the growth that they're going to give you. That's what we call a future value or projected value. They cannot guarantee it. Now, with property, uh, the values that I showed you uh, cannot be guaranteed. It's a projected value, but because we're working on a 10-year moving average, guess what's going to happen? the chances are about 80% that over a 10-year period, you're going to have a better return than what I've just showed you. But now it gets extremely, extremely complicated because if you keep on getting that growth, the first five years, no problem for that growth. But now that property is going to run out of steam, if I can put it to you that way. So you have to have a system that's going to guarantee you that you can maintain and sustain that let me show you something, if I may, uh, Scott. Uh, can I? Yeah, no, perfect, yeah. Okay. Um, I want to, to go back to this property. I want to change uh, the capital growth rate back to 12%. And I want to see something quickly. And perhaps what I should do is to... Just while you're bringing this up, there's a there's a, a comment made here by Jason Owls, uh, correct, but you'll never sell that property for that price in 10 years. I think the important you thing see, is what you're saying. You see, that's the problem. Yeah. That, 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 that's, that has got nothing to do with the property. It's got nothing to do. It's the investment that we're talking about, Scott. It's the investment. Because um, let me take this thing back to its original, and that was, what's it, 420, if I remember correctly. 420. I, I just want to show, and and a lot of people get confused at this point in time, and and I'm glad that he that he asked that question. So this should more or less, I think, give us the in, initial 45% uh, growth. So this property for that 1.1 1,000, if he invested that money throughout the term, that was the, the amount of money that you would receive, the uh, 354,000. But look here, the growth rate 
the first year there's 1,100, the second year only 800 because the interest, the rent will go up. And the fourth year, the fifth year, this person is going to start receiving money. So now there's a whole technique that I teach in the Property Pro program to maintain that 1,000 right through the term. Does that make sense? In other words, you're going to end up with a hell of a lot of more property, but you have to do it in the, in the right sequence and you have to make sure that you sustain. In the third example in the Property Pro program, I show you how to use this specific at exactly a thousand rand in order to get a more feeling for the true value per thousand rand uh, that you're going to invest. So you're hundred percent right, it's not that property, it's the investment and you have to, the property is just the investment instrument that you're using. It's the instrument that's going to give you the growth. It's the same as unit trust. If one unit trust is not going to give you the growth, you move to gold. If gold is not going to give you the, the growth, you move to something else. And sometimes you're going to have two or three unit trust that, that's going to give you, uh, hopefully, well, you're not going to get it, but uh, that's what they're going to tell you. And with property, it's exactly the same thing. The first time that I bought the property, the first property that I referred to, I kept that property for five years. I paid off, the property paid itself off basically in five years. I bought my first commercial property. The commercial property plus the property paid itself off in five years. I bought my first block of flats. Go to my CV on honestdreyer.com and see how that happened. In the CV I give it a full disclosure of basically the first couple of properties transactions that I did. And, but at that point in time, the growth maintained, I maintained the growth that I initially had, in, in, in fact, the growth was a hell of a lot more, but I sat with a, with a lot of property after 10 years and not with a single property. But for the first five years, there was just one property because I had to learn the skills. Just to, just to confirm uh, what you just said there, Anas, because that didn't come across clearly. You sat with a lot of property, but without one mortgage, basically. No, no, no. I, I sat with, with a few properties that were, there were no mortgages, and then I convert that into many properties with mortgages, but I had to watch my cash flow, in other words the thousand rand. They could not be more than a thousand rand that flows out of my pocket because otherwise the banks would never give me the loans on those lots of properties. Okay, perfect. Now just... Does um, that make sense? No, fantastic. Look, there's there's a lot of there's a hell of a lot of questions here, and we we will come back to them. I just want to get back to that question that I asked you. You know, if I've got a property that's an average property, do I keep it or do I wait? Uh, there's a couple of questions here. One guy said he's worried about South Africa as a whole. Does he wait for the market to recover and then sell, or you know, what what are your thoughts on that basically? Okay, um, Scott. <laughs> let's go back to to this thing right and let's bring it back to more because these figures may confuse people because if you haven't got the skills I think you'll agree with me that that this will definitely not make sense to to anyone 45.98 uh, 45.98 okay let's assume uh, normally in people understand this uh, a lot better. Okay, uh, now uh, give me the question again, Scott. Well, just, just if I'm sitting with a property now and I bought it and I'm paying it and the rents aren't doing quite as well as I thought they were going to do and the shortfall is, you know, okay. quite a burden every month. Let's assume, let's assume it is this property per thousand. Yeah. It's this property. Okay. Now, you, you know that this property is not going to give you and get you to where you want to be. Does that make sense? In other words, you know by now, if you've got the Property Pro program, you can do the analysis and I promise you with everything in me, if that is the case, you did not buy that property according to the way that I instructed you to buy it. But I, I know it's just a, a, a scenario, a hypothetical case that, that you want to bring across. Okay, so assume it's this property and, and you need two million when you retire. So all you have to do is to find, you're going to look for a property and let's assume that you can find a property like this that's going to give you two million based on these criteria, right? Then what you're going to do is you're going to sell this property, on con uh, buy this property on condition 
that you can sell this because otherwise the bank is not going to give you you, you convert that thousand for that thousand in other words you convert a bad thousand for a good thousand rand does that make sense it's yeah. it's that logical the the principle is and and I'm calling that a stepping up and that's exactly what I did with my portfolio about uh, somewhere in the 90s where where once I understood this principle I said okay now that I've got the basis right now that I understand how it works then I sold some of my properties but I only sold them when I could find properties that could outperform those initial great investments that I had okay Did so I mean basically what you're doing is you take you take if if I've got an average property that I'm not that happy with I've got to take it and substitute for a better property basically and and get the whole agreement of sale based on that principle okay yeah let me ask you a question how do you know that it's average property Scott well I'm saying if I so I do the calculation and I realize there's that no it, ways it's not there's no ways there's no ways in your life that you can determine if it's a good or bad or average or what property based on anything else than this property pro investment program there's no ways anyone that tells you that your property is good or bad is busy lying through their teeth for you because they want to take the control out of your hand the only way that you'll ever know this for 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 sure is if you've got a system and I'm not aware of a hell of a lot of systems going out there except for the property pro program because I'm not selling properties I'm selling information what I've been doing for since you know me I've never sold a property to anyone because the moment that I sell properties I can manipulate the market and I'll give the courses I will never tell them what I'm, what I'm telling you now and what I've told you in 2002 I will camouflage it and I will give you the training to, to buy the properties that I've got to sell so unless the person that sells the property uh, or, or that gives the education is a purist in terms of the education flip be careful because well that's from personal experience and from what I've seen what happened in the market be extremely careful because people will not tell you this because the majority of people uh, properties that they want to sell are not great investments I'm sorry for that one Scott I know that you're also selling properties <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I mean, okay. At the end of the day, it's important for people, and the whole intention of this evening was to empower people. Um, and there are a couple of names coming up here, but I'm not going to mention them. Uh, but it's it's basically to empower people so that they can make those educated decisions themselves. And even people that are in property should be able to understand it, so that they can also make the the you know be able to show people how it actually works. Of course, and that's why in 2005, when when the markets were going crazy. Uh, I recorded all of this so that because I knew that the markets would turn around when everyone else said the markets will never turn around not before 2010 I think that was a soccer year and flipping is going to crazy well I know that the markets will turn around and I know that the interest rates will go up and I know that the capital growth will go down and I know that the capital growth will go up and that's why we smooth it and because of that I can sleep at night unless a person like you want me to have a webinar <laughs> listen just a quick one um, I see the screen that you put up in terms of how to find the best properties in South Africa it's quite interesting quite a few people have made comments here on finding properties and the fact that you can't find cash flow properties and the fact that rents are a problem um, etc etc I mean just from personal experience I found properties uh, literally in the last 12 months that are cash flow positive um, even in the last two or three years and it's not a case of it's, it's a belief system actually if you think that you can't find them because they certainly do exist in terms of going out and finding properties that are actually cash flow positive and also dealing with the banks and now now let, 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 let's stop right there and then you, you know people get totally confoculated by everything because I've bought a couple of and you've bought a couple of cash flow positive property now everyone wants a cash flow property otherwise he's not going to invest if you can get a property let's take this property and you can get a 80 or 70 percent growth on your investment what do you want to do sit on your ass do absolutely nothing because you can't find a freaking 
uh, cash flow positive property and in the meantime invest your money at paper asset that's going to give you 230,000 or flip and go out and take that property and learn the skill set because once you know how to get 70% let me hide this and I'm getting some of the moor here because they use it as excuses but in the process they 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 flip and take their future away from them because they w don't want to learn the skill but if if I can have a 70% growth versus a, a a uh, twelve uh, percent growth. This is this is not a cash flow positive property, Scott. But it's the growth on my in investment that is going to help me to become rich. If you keep on doing this for the next ten years, you'll be fifteen million rand better off than a person that hasn't done it. Are, are you getting it? I promise you, within the next three years, if you keep on doing this, you will find that cash flow positive properties, especially in the market conditions that we're in at the moment, are, is going to be there in the thousands. You know, last year I think 14% of all properties were repossessed properties. This year they, they reckon that of all the properties that's going to be sold will be 40%. So there's a move, it's a correction that is busy happening. And that's why I've said to my property pro students, if there's nothing to do, you do nothing. But if you can get a 70%, it's 10, it's 15 million times rand better than investing your money where you sit and, and, and wait for uh, poorness to fall on you. And, and sorry for that one. But I I really think, uh, just to give a very simple example, it's something I heard a long time ago, which I love, is that you never learn to swim by reading a book either. You know, at the end of the day, you've got to... You've got to teach yourself, you've got to get the knowledge, you've got to invest in yourself, but at the end of the day, you've also got to get involved and take action because you're going to learn you know, while doing it, basically. Okay, here's a guarantee that I give you. Go to Property School, download that, go through all the courses. It's a hell of a lot of free courses. There are free courses. Uh, go to the uh, uh, DVD. There's a 90-minute DVD where I'm going to take you and give you a lot more practical examples than, than tonight and perhaps even more structured and uh, do the property course. Uh, even if you do nothing, just, just do that because you're going to see the, the power. But again, there are good properties and bad properties and unless you've got the property pro program, the property pro program is definitely not part of this free uh, thing here. But in good times and bad times, I'm promising you that property is a better investment on condition that you know it and on condition that you've got a system than any other investment except for one which I'm not going to share tonight with you uh, that is for only my my wealth greatest university students so property and I only invest my my real surplus into property and it's been uh, uh, I've never made property my my life as, as such because it's a it's a it's a place where you park your surplus in are there any uh, other questions, uh, perhaps, Scott? There are loads of questions, if you don't mind. Uh, let uh, let me go through it. Do you mind, Alice, if I just swap the screens back quickly? Um, I just need to. I just want to put something up here quickly. Just want to show. Um, you can swap the screens around, uh, but I want you at the end to swap it back because I think I'm going to give the people that has gone through all the trouble to stay with us up to this point, perhaps one hell of a deal. Okay, so uh, take well, this actually, no, are you gonna, are you going to bring it up then? Because I don't need to put it on in terms of. Okay, no, yep. I'll, I'll, right. let's. Uh, I'll start okay. on your screen then. Let's go through these questions basically because there's a lot of questions here, and guys, I know that uh, I know there's a lot of questions, but uh, you know, even if it doesn't apply to you, I think when Hannes actually goes through it, you'll find that the answers to the questions will be very valuable to you as well, basically in terms of where you are. So I'm going to start at the top and let's just go through it. Justina says. I have a property in South Africa, but I worry about the future of our country. Do I sell my property when the market recovers and invest a third abroad and reinvest another third in South Africa and the, and, and the rest in a bank abroad? Okay, first of all, why on earth do you want to sell and then buy again? Uh, you've just learned over the weekend, Justino, that the frickin' moment that you touch your, your capital base uh, you, 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 in terms of, of finances, right? Uh, immediately you're, you're, you start losing money. Okay, so Justino, uh, rethink the question and then give it to me again because you did not think that 
that question through. And, and now suddenly you want to take a third out and reinvest a third year uh, on the capital base. Uh, why don't you just bond that on condition that you can afford it and then invest uh, overseas? I will definitely never in my life invest overseas unless I can get a better growth than I can get in, uh, here in South Africa. Because irrespective of what other people are telling you, it's the growth that's going to make you rich, uh, not uh, the, the, uh, the country that you're in. And if, if you invest in South Africa in five years' time and the mango comes uh, and eats the, the fan, uh, then the chances are that you'll have the money uh, to go wherever you want to go. Jeff says, I'm not uh, saying that you should not invest overseas. That's not what I'm, what I'm saying. But, but do the calculations, Justina. Jeff says, when can we expect an uptick in the property market? I think obviously we've discussed that. I think the most important thing is that people get a, a whole lot of analysis paralysis as to where the market is, but with what you've shown tonight, it actually comes down to the actual property and what one can expect. Rightly or wrongly, Anders? You, you see, I, to me it does not matter if the market is going up or down, because I haven't got a problem. And neither should any one of my students have a problem if they've listened to me. It's when people do not follow the system, then suddenly they're going to have serious problems. Okay? I, I've, I've got a surprise for you, Jeff. I, I think the market is still going to go down. And I think you're going to wait a couple of years before the market is really going to recover. If I look at the American economy as it stands at the moment, I think there's a couple of of interesting surprises that's going to wait. And that's why I was passion so passionate five years ago when I said to people, make sure that you understand and make sure that you invest. Now some of my students went out and they, they, they got in fabulous returns and then they started getting greedy and they started following their own advice and other gurus advice and now suddenly they sit in huge, huge dire straits. And they come back to me and I said, but that's not what I told you five years ago. Go and listen to the recordings that I've made in 2002 and 2005. So it's, it's got nothing. It's because we've made the wrong decisions and I've already showed you what you can possibly do to get out of that. And on that free DVD that I'm going to give you, I'm going to take you even further and show you what to do. But it's got nothing to do with the market. It's because we've made dumb decisions. And those dumb decisions, it's not your fault. It was because you were ignorant and you did not understand because we did not have the skill sets to make those decisions. Jeff says to you, would you recommend that we rent our primary residence and rather invest in a secondary investment property? Jeff, there's no ways that I can go into that because it gets a hell of a lot more uh, interesting than I've literally, literally touched approximately I would say 3% and, and maybe it was 3% was enough to confuse you at this stage and I'm sorry for that. But you, you, you have to understand the fundamentals and the analytical side before, before what I'm going to tell you will make any sense to you. So it, it's part of the property uh, course and I really go into that but I, I can't do it tonight. It's, it, it's, uh, it's impossible unless I give you the whole course. Jeff. Jeff has also asked, uh, is it possible that the government could nationalize multiple property ownership? They can. But uh, if that happens, Jeff, I've got a surprise for you. Because they're going to nationalize all the mines, so your shares will be zilt, zero, bugger all. Um, and anything, the, uh, my grandmother uh, uh, said to me, yeah, if the heaven falls, we all have, will have uh, blue hats. And uh, yeah. Uh, anything is possible, but uh, as long as it's not happening, uh, then I carry on the way that I'm carrying on. Uh, if if I've listened to all these doom sayers, I would have done absolutely nothing in my life. I would not have had trust because in '79 the Francis Commission talks about trust, and then the Katz Commission, and then the Swiss Commission, and each and every time the media makes a mood of a story out of this thing, and 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 today it's still exactly the same to a certain extent. So I, I, I don't listen to, and, and perhaps Jeff, if I can give you advice, um, please don't watch TV and please don't listen because those gurus that tells you what to do and 
most of them are bloody poor. But um, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this, um, but Bato um, has said, what is geared and ungeared? Hannes, you touched on it just for his sake. Okay, ungeared properties, when you've, you've got a million rand, the property is worth a million rand, you buy it for a million rand, that's ungeared. In other words, there's no bond on it. The moment that there's a bond, it becomes a geared property. And there are different levels of gearing. In, in other words, you can gear for positive or for negative, and then people say a negative growth is because this, uh, what, what I just showed you, or the majority that I showed you tonight, was negative geared property where it cost you like a thousand one hundred and eighty rand that goes out of your, your, your pocket. That is a negative geared property. And in that course, I will, uh, even the, I hope in the free course or some of the material that I'm going to give you is that geared properties is very dangerous unless again you've got the skill sets and unless you understand how negative geared properties work. Uh, you've referred to a positive geared property, uh, Scott, when I interfere a, a little bit earlier. Um, so there are different ways to structure it again in, in the course we, we're explaining that. Stain, Stain actually said, how do you find properties in South Africa after the boom period where you can cover your bond and expenses with rental income? I think we've covered that in quite a lot of detail. And as Hannes pointed out, it doesn't have to be uh, cash flow positive. You know, it, it all depends on what your growth is and what you're looking for. But I will give you a link at the end, Stain, on how, um, just to give you a contact on how I'm doing it myself. Um, Neil Rousseau says, get an Apple Mac and your computer won't conforculate you again. <laughs> Um, I've got an Apple Mac and I don't like the damn thing. You, you know, everyone talks about Apple Mac. My Apple Mac has given me ten times more problems this, than this one. So uh, if you want an Apple Mac, uh, you can take it over from me. <laughs> so just because everyone says that Apple Mac, Apple Mac, it's the biggest lot of hype that I've ever heard in my life. To some people it works and for me it does not work. For Mark, he said, uh, growth is only a paper asset and needs to be sold or for refinance purposes, but then income must be there. Do you invest for, do, sorry, don't you invest for income? First of all, if you say something like that, you must be confoculated because if I want a million rand per month and I've got a million rand out of my properties, why on earth would I ever sell my property? So that's why I said, uh, capital growth rate, uh, capital growth is a phantom concept cockied up by the financial systems and the governments. You don't need ever to sell your property because you, you're looking for the income. All these fa f fancy figures that I showed you is irrelevant because I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the income. I didn't show you the income because it's not applicable tonight, but I, I'm looking for the income. I want to replace, if you're financially free, you've got the income this month, you spend a million bucks, next month you've got another million bucks. The month after that, you've got another million bucks. You've got it irrespective of how much the, the capital worth of your property is worth because I don't need to touch on my capital and I will never uh, need to, to, to touch capital. So I'm not going to sell any of my properties. It, it makes no sense. Jan said, do you uh, the way that I invest. Jan says, do you assume 100% financing? Uh, I didn't uh, assume 100% financing in the, in the example that I showed you, uh, but there are ways that you can get 100% financing even if they tell you that it's not true, uh, which I also show to you. Uh, be careful for 100% financing because your gearing is going to be that much more. So unless you know what you do, uh, be careful for 100% financing. Okay, because yeah, Grant Barnes Webs actually said the biggest challenge I have encountered in securing a bond is it's still possible to secure 0%, 5%, 10% SA bonds if I was out yeah, outside South can. Africa. Um, it is, look, it is tricky uh, when you're overseas, uh, a lot more tricky nowadays in terms of bank financing. But yeah, sorry. Mm. No, it is possible. It depends on if, if you're worth a 10 million, you go to the bank and you've got a, hundred, uh, a million bond that you want to take up and you've got. Uh, two million income per month, I promise you the banks are going to give you a hundred percent bond plus. I, I, I guarantee that to you. It's, it's because uh, people are marginal and they, they stretch every single cent that they had and then they find it very difficult and then they say the banks and it's impossible. No, it's your finances and the banks are actually doing you a huge favor not to stretch you 
uh, too much because apparently uh, a lot of people don't know how to manage their own finances. Yosefat said, uh, the income that makes up the pie in the Mercedes principle, is it income after normal bond repayments or total income from the property? No, it's after, um, that's your, your, your surplus. Uh, uh, in the Mercedes principle, the rest will not know what I'm talking about. That's after um, your living expenses. Okay, in other words, you've already paid the bonds and, and blah, 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 the whole story. And you've lived, now you're sitting with the surplus, and that's the way that I uh, advise you in the beginning to allocate your surplus. Bob says, what do you do with problem tenants so it's difficult to get them out? It's not difficult. You don't know how to manage them. Go and learn how to to do that right. You haven't got the skill set. You should never have gotten those tenants in the beginning in your place. It's one of the things in the course that I that I teach you, and I make a lot of fun on what uh, Tanya, because she's doing most of the managing, uh, what she's done in the past. And I think there are some excellent tricks uh, that we've used. Um. Alvero has said, please ask Hannes to explain how using IRR he attains the growth of 42% on the aforesaid property. So basically the property price system. Uh, yeah, that's intellectual property, uh, property, but in essence the internal rate of return is uh, based on the cash flow. In other words, uh, the one month in property there's uh, a thousand rand that goes out of your pocket, the next month it's two thousand because the geezer break and then over a year you're going to get a fluctuated amount and the IRR, it's not my uh, calculation, you can check it up in Excel, it's, it's absolutely uh, a mind-boggling what's in Excel and, and then uh, there's a whole formula uh, and I based the, the, the system now to, to get to the, to, the, to the sums where we can work with the IRR, that's tricky but just to calculate an IRR uh, very simple, you can use any Excel uh, to, the, to that. And there's a help function that will, will teach you what the IRR is. Uh, I'm not going to do it tonight, uh, but uh, it, it's not difficult. Almost says, uh, I wonder if Hannes can somewhere make some comments on modern construction methods in relation to property investments, building with all kinds of... I cannot, of yeah, I can't, uh, I've got no experience on that, sorry for that one. Uh, but the IRR will tell if it's a good or a bad in, uh, construction in terms of uh, what you want to achieve, but then you have to take the risk into consideration, and I haven't got enough um, uh, information to really uh, make a comment. Melissa said, when dealing with estate agents, how do you get an honest to God idea of the rental in a particular area? Melissa, I'll let Hannes answer that, but there's fantastic information on the web now. You know, you don't have to rely on one person you can actually get the research yourself. Um, Hannes, I don't know if you've, uh, I know you actually used to have a website, I don't know if it's still available, but uh, where people it's, can get that it's still a, Yeah, it's still available, but uh, there's so much information today on, on, on the internet, uh, uh, Scott, and uh, that it's unreal. Uh, also, you pick up the telephone, you, you, you phone four or five agents in that area, you tell them uh, that you want to rent, and suddenly there's uh, a two-bedroom flat in that complex and they tell you what is available so uh, it's really really not uh, difficult to uh, you have to do research but with the telephone you can get very far. Duan said how important is it to raise rental every year do, don't you think it's unreasonable to increase rental every year in today's crisis? I, mean, I don't think so because uh, why, why should it be uh, if, if if my property is, is worth that and uh, it's even lower than the average, uh, why should I not increase my, my rentals? And uh, we're in a free country, if that person can find a better place, then uh, please let him move. Uh, I, I'm giving value for money. All my properties that I'm renting out, uh, there's no flipping way that a person will find better value than, than the properties. That's why we maintain the properties and they are, uh, depending on, on, on the area, uh, there's no ways that you'll find uh, better. And if you do, then please uh, move. So, no, uh, I, I, uh, there are some times where we do not increase it, Tanya's handling that, uh, but then normally there are, are reasons for that. Uh, I know a couple of uh, years ago, uh, because 
of the properties that, that went totally crazy, uh, we skipped a couple or on some uh, units we, we, we skipped uh, an increase or two. But currently, I think the increases are, are the norm. Dave says, but how did he manage to limit his serviceability commitment to only a thousand on the property unless you can structure a bond in your favor? There's practically nothing available in this range when you include rates and levies. Uh, also. No, 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 sorry. Uh, that was per thousand. It's an example. It, I've, I've used that as an example tonight. It, it's not. Uh, I've showed you that each and every property, one was 1,100 and the other one 10,000 something. Okay, so it was an example. I I, I um, uh, benchmark it per thousand because normally people don't understand. And you've picked the the worst property out, out of the three tonight because you didn't understand that. Uh, so just because you spent ten thousand, you got a million, is not uh, better than spending only one thousand one hundred and get uh, two hundred and thirty thousand as an example. Uh, I've just used that as an example. Per, th per thousand. Perfect. And then I, 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 I can promise you that they are literally at this stage. If you structure it correctly and you follow the property pro system, thousands of properties in South Africa that will cost you out of your pocket less than a thousand rand. That's an absolute total guarantee. Jenny says, how do you know what the growth is going to be? You don't need to know. You work on a past on history and you work on a 10-year moving average. We know it's going to go up, we know it's going to go down. I'm smoothing it out over a 10-year period. And the chances are that it will go up, great. That it will go down, also great. Be becomes totally irrelevant. Hannes, can I suggest we, we'll stay online answering questions, but I was, uh, I did say that uh, it was from 7 till 8.30, and we are coming to the, to the 8.30 part. Um, can you just let people know if they are interested in terms of what next, what they can do, and then we will straight after that go back and just continue asking questions. Are you, are you happy with that? Is that okay from your side? I'm, I'm 100% happy. If, if they're happy, I've got nothing to do. So let's quickly see if I can get my computer going because I haven't done anything. It goes. Okay. Um, what I wanted to do tonight uh, for and I see there's quite a few attendees here that's still available, uh, that's still up. I, I've put a, a package deal together of the whole Property Pro plus uh, financial software course that I've got. It's a home study course. Everything that I'm going to show you uh, tonight, and uh, it's that's if you think it's it's a deal, go for it. If you don't think it's a deal, uh, then please go and buy some of my competitors' stuff and and really learn the hard way. Um, the Property Pro Investment Program, uh, we're selling it for 6,750 Rand. That's the, the program plus full education. Yes, my guarantee to you. If you've used that and if it's going to take you a full day to learn the stuff, but in a day, I promise you that you're going to know 95% more than any estate agent. I promise you that you'll know 95% more than any auditor, right? Financial planner when it comes to property investment and investing it in the right way. So uh, 6,750 is really, really a bargain. But I'm going to give you a special till the end of the week. It's the Executive Property Pro Investment Home Study Package Deal. The, this package deal includes eight products and nine bonuses. It includes the Property Pro Investment in Uncertain Times Introduction Seminar. That is free in any case. So uh, don't, uh, it's not going to cost you money. The Debt Eradication Introduction Seminar, which is also for free. The Wealth Creators Introduction Seminar DVD, which is also basically for free on some of my other websites. The Property Pro Beginners Audio CD, it's a home study course for 1,450. I'm going to include that. The Property Pro Investment DVD set and the Property Pro Program, that's the one that I've just mentioned to you. Uh, if you go to my website, Thousands of people have bought it for 6,750 Rand. The advanced property investment set, thousands have bought it for 3,900 Rand. You cannot buy this unless you've bought the first one, the Property Pro Investment with the, with the program, because we based this, that whole day course uh, on that. 
the trust for the entrepreneur and investor, the normal price, again, thousands have bought it for 3,900 rand. The debt eradication, uh, people have bought it for 3,750. And now my the thing is thinking. Uh, bonuses, the spending, the budget, the Excel spreadsheets, the quick debt eradication forecaster, the boss, bond, boss calculator, uh, really that thing in the beginning was worth 1,500 Rand uh, in itself, the first eight lessons of the Wealth Creators Mentoring Program, the Formula for Riches, uh, the Science of Getting Rich eBook. Uh, that's a fabulous book that you, that you have to read. It is available um, uh, for free on the internet if you go and have a look. So even if you do not want to buy this package deal and you just want the free stuff, uh, please go and, 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 and look for that book, The Science of Getting Rich. It's, it's a fabulous read for you to do. The Debt Relief eCourse on request consists of 15 lessons, and I'll include that, Managing Your Money eCourse, uh, 10 lessons and W Income uh, eCourse on request uh, also consists of 11 lessons. And uh, if, if you want this, uh, it's worth a hell of a lot more than 15,000 but I'm going to give you a special till the end of the week. This is this Friday, uh, till 12 o'clock, and for 9,750. That's if, if you're serious about your future, and if you think that it can help you, I promise you, I think uh, some of my old students that's still on <laughs> this will maybe uh, are looking for stones, but I, I think the more people can learn, uh, the better it's going to be. You can phone Lilo or Neta, uh, this number, it's in Pretoria, it's my office, it's at Property School, and at Property School there on the top you can see it, so if you go to the website you can see the telephone number, but it's 5424560, uh, and or you can, if you've got any inquiries whatsoever, you can uh, either Lilo or Neta and do the inquiries at Lilo at Property School. Also, if you are not sure what what's involved in this package deal, uh, please uh, send an uh, uh, email to Lilo at Property School and tell her, please tell me what's included in this and she's going to send you a whole list of uh, more detail what's, what's included in, the, in this if, if you are serious. Okay, and then Property School. And uh, uh, Scott, I think that is what I wanted to, to give them for all the trouble uh, for being on the, the webinar uh, so late at night. No, brilliant. Hannes, thank you very much. And just, guys, just remember when you do uh, go online, just do mention to Lilu that it's uh, from this event tonight because, as you saw, the price is normally 15000 And thank you very much, Hannes, to make it uh, available so, for everyone at, at a discount rate. Uh, please do me a favor and please don't phone them before I, tomorrow because uh, they don't know that I've made this deal. So, uh, or mention to them. But I can tell you that they're not going to take your money. They're first going to run to me and say, Flip, what have you done now? Uh, so, so rather wait till uh, make it quarter past eight before you phone them because then they, they know that they can expect and uh, that's going to be the price. So if you just want the program, it's 6750 If you want the whole bonus package, it's that 9750 rand. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for that, Anas. I just want to, I just want to change presenters, if you don't mind. Just uh, going to put it back onto my screen here quickly. Um, You're just for those, I'm, I'm going to. It should be coming up now to show my screen as well. Um, a lot of people have asked if anyone is interested in where to find property, then please get hold of Kristen at ipsinvest.com. If you can send her an email, and she will then put you in contact with the right people. Brad, my business partner has been very active with the banks, the repos, the pre-auctions, the auctions. We deal with a lot of the big estate agents and um, yeah, and, and we work with the estate agents and the auctioneers and everything and, and he'd be able to assist you on finding uh, property investments on that. On that note, I just want to, there's a couple of other links there in terms of a blog, Twitter, YouTube, all new ways of, of working and, and, and getting access. But let's continue for those who want to stay online because there's a lot of great questions here, and, and we did promise that we would go through them, although I do feel like I'm summing up the Zambezi, Hannes, because as fast as you're answering them, I've got more coming in. But let me just let me just keep going for now, if you don't mind. Doug Morrison has said... It's fine. Yep. It's fine. Carry on. Doug Morrison has said, can he give us a simple formula to work out growth percentage so we can apply it to our current properties? No, I can't. I want to sell you my program. Sorry for that one. 
<laughs> okay, almost. Okay, let me let me let me give you a simple. You you take uh, what you've paid for the property, right? You go to the estate agents, you ask them what it is worth right now, and the difference between the two, you deduct the, the, the high, uh, low amount from the high amount, and you divide the, the, the answer by the low amount. That will be the simple growth. But please do not rely on that. And uh, let, me, uh, let me add a little bit more value. Please go on, on a, a property school. Uh, download, uh, give me your, your details and then as soon as you've given your details we're going to give you uh, access to the portal. We'll, we'll send you a link uh, telling you, uh, giving you, you access to the, to the back end. Once you're in the back end of property school you'll find a lot of stuff. One of the stuff uh, is a DVD and on that DVD I'm going to give you a far better expl explanation. So I know there's a lot of questions. Um, do that for me, and I hope that that can help you. I Alma, hope it helps. Alma says, uh, having the problem to do the calculation is great. Finding the right property is really difficult. Um, look, at the end of the day, we've, we've discussed that a lot tonight, and, and it is difficult, Alma, but um, it's all about having the right skills. And once you've got the right skills and you know what you're looking for, if you build the right relationships with, with the right estate agents, etc., then, then the properties will come to you in terms of you actually finding it. I'm, I'm sure you'll agree with me on that, Honest. Absolutely, and the times are getting. Uh, we've been waiting for the for for this time, uh, Scott. And you know that I've that I've said since, well, 2005, 2006. And um, for for the investors, uh, flip this. This is uh, this is that time that that we've been waiting for and I, I, I'm glad we're here. Uh, I just hope that the interest rate goes up another four or five percent and then the good times have arrived. Reing for says, the property investors, not for the rest. <laughs> Reing says uh, what to do when IRR levels off after five years or so, either refinance or flip? The IRR should not be down because if you've worked on a 10-year moving average, there's no ways. Uh, I'm, I'm monitoring this uh, on a regular basis. Uh, if you've bought a property five years ago, according to the way that I've said to you, on a year-to-year -year it will be down. But if you've followed the system, uh, you're going to be up still in, in terms of the real growth if you've done it according to the way that I that I told you. So there's no ways if you follow the property pro system that your IRR will be down. Uh, 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 the projected IRR will be down because I've bought properties like five years ago and the reality is my IRR is a lot higher than what I projected at that point. Jan says, I found great properties based on the calculations but I can't get financing. How would you go about that? Stepping up the way that I said to you, uh, 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 take the property, your worst property, buy your best possible property on condition that you can sell your worst property. And by doing that, you're stepping up. In other words, you convert your, thousand, your bad thousand rand for good thousand rand. Okay. Melissa said, is it still possible to get an access bond? If so, would you recommend an access bond to use to continue extending against your original purchase to increase one's portfolio? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll be careful for that. The, the, the moment that you start with gettings and stuff like that, uh, I, I'm not sure that you understand the program. But yeah, it is still possible to get access bonds. Okay, then Jason also said, can you analyze an example property for me now in projected value? Jason, we have run seriously over time. There's a lot of questions here. I think we've recorded this evening. You can go back and watch the way that, that Hannes has analyzed the property, and then he's also given you a lot of resources of, so that you can actually do it yourself, which I think is the key thing. Tony uh, has said, hi, chaps. How close do you need to be to your properties to manage them effectively? If you buy overseas, it makes managing properties very difficult. Uh, from my side, probably more my expertise here, Hannes. I, I, I agree very much so. 
And that's why 80% of people that actually buy property overseas lose money. And that's why it's very important, the best of breed partners that you work with. But just as any property, whether it's in the same town as where you live, you need to have the systems and the procedures in place and, and most importantly, the right people to help you manage them properly. I don't know your thoughts on that, Hannes. I agree 100%. The majority of my properties are not in Pretoria. Yeah. And, and you know, at the end of the day, guys, whether, whether they're in the same town as yours, it's, it's the, the bigger investors, you know, once you start to get capacity, you've got to have those systems and everything in place and, and management and management agents and stuff become a key to your... Perhaps, your let, me, perhaps let me come in here, Scott. Your first couple of properties, I think it's going to be vital that they should be close to you. And, and with that first one or two properties, you, you're busy learning the skills. And I will even advise you on the first properties to actually do the rentals yourself so, th so that you can understand how it works and, and why it is so important to go through the selection criteria and have the right selection criteria. Uh, I know it's going to be difficult, but that skills will come in very handy once you start growing your portfolio and you start managing uh, letting agents. Okay, so uh, it's not necessary, but unless you're going to have the skills and what Scott said, the, the systems and the processes, uh, you're going to make it extremely difficult for yourself. But in the beginning, um, I, I'm glad that when we started, we started buying properties in the town. That was Rustenburg. That's where I started. Um, that were close to, just to us. Um, Alvero has asked a number of questions like um, the basis of the growth rates and how do you get it. I think Alvero, again, if you can go back and watch the video because it, we, we can go through it in, in more detail and possibly we, we need to, to follow up. But Hannes has, has given you a lot of examples. Grant Barnes Web has said, where can I buy the property pro program? Hopefully that's been answered for you. Um, Yasef has said, please do Skype webinars in the future if possible. It's not as good as using GoToWebinar because you can't share the screens and you can't look at the PowerPoint, but point taken, thank you very much, and it is why we record it. So if anyone's battled tonight, we will be sending the recording and you can watch it again in your own time. Andre Kutz has said... Also, I, I also don't think you can get four or 500 people on Skype. Yeah, no, perfect. Andre Kutz has said, uh, why do you take the vacancy at 8% in the software? Um, it's about one month, um, uh, two months uh, vacancy. Uh, it's it, it's it's something that I've when when I started. Uh, if you, if you don't know how to handle a, a property and you've got a, a turnover, then I I feel comfortable by taking a eight percent um, vacancy rate, uh, even if it's going to uh, put you in a negative or a more negative situation with your IRR. Uh, that's part of um, uh, eliminating the risk. Our vacancy rate stands at uh, less than 3%, but there are more than one property. So if you've got only one property and you don't know how to handle that tenant, uh, you're going to find that it is not difficult to, to skip a month. Okay. Jason says, what about a good cash positive property in an area turning bad, i.e., but this property covers shortfall on more expensive rental prop, this prop also has an equity of 300 to 350k. I haven't got a problem with properties like that. It's not going to cost you a, a cent. Uh, perhaps what you should do then is with a with a surplus is reinvest the surplus um, in order to give you the maximum growth on the surplus. So. Uh, I, uh, there are certain areas that I will definitely not invest in, uh, and simply because I feel uncomfortable uh, with that. But uh, a, a normal, let's call it a, a suburb in Pretoria that, that starts to, uh, that's not giving, uh, the majority of suburbs at the moment will give you a negative uh, return on your investment uh, because there's not a capital growth. Will you agree with me on that one, Scott, for the last three years? Yeah, no, very much so. Um, okay, so, so don't worry too much on that one. Just uh, it's not the capital growth. It's it's got nothing to do with the capital growth. It's got to do with the with the um, with the IRR. Please don't confuse the two. I can have a negative growth on my capital, but I can still have a hell of a growth 
on my investment in that property. The, the, the capital growth plays 1 27th part in a property and people don't get this. It's not about the capital growth, it's about how much do my investment grow. In other words, what I'm investing in the property, how much is that growing? Property is just the vehicle. So even in a negative, and I can prove that to you, even when the area grows negatively, I can still get an extremely high growth rate on my investment. Sorry for that one. Carry on. No, perfect. Justina, I think, replied to your comment about his first question. He said, my property is all paid for, so basically transferring into cash and then reinvesting and having some cash. I don't need to sell it. It's just the future I'm worried about and don't have cash but assets. Rather take a portion of that and, and keep and do the calculations just, you know. Uh, in other words, if you, if you do take a bond, you can take that money and invest it overseas the way that you've learned. But, um, yeah, uh, I will definitely not sell it. I, I think you were there over the weekend and I explained to you how much it cost you the moment that you, th that you want to do the things that you, that you just mentioned. Okay, then um, Hannah says, would it be a wise move to cancel some of the insurance policies and push to pay off current bond in a shorter time? No, I don't think so, unless you know uh, what uh, you're getting. Uh, you can make the biggest mistake in your whole life, because if your property is going to give you like a 2 or 3 percent, um, then uh, in total, because there's a lot of factors. So this additional amount that you're going to pay off is just one of the 27 possible uh, variables that we're talking about. So you have to do the calculations before you can make that decision. But in general, um, I would be very hesitant uh, to do something like that because there are other implications uh, that you have to take into consideration. Okay, Laverne said, uh, where does practicality and reality come into it? The property in Windsor West may be better investment, but in reality you could probably only rent it out to bad elements who will not pay the rent and wreck the house. How does that impact the investment? Yeah, that's normally because you've got um, uh, uh, a landlord that does not know how to, to do it. We haven't got problems with that. Uh, it's a skill set and I think I've mentioned that before and it's part of the courses that I'm presenting, how to manage your tenants. Um, if you don't know how to manage your tenants, then any place. Uh, I know of people uh, that are renting the place out for, for 100, 112,000 Rand per month and where those tenants are not paying. So uh, just a hell of a lot bigger problem. But the problem is not the tenant, the problem is the landlord. The landlord normally are slop hut, they do not do their homework and then they blame the tenant. That tenant should never have been in that property and, and that's what I'm saying. In the beginning I had full courses based on that and then Tanya said to me, honestly you're wasting your time. Um, people, uh, they should do their homework and uh, they should not get a tenant that, that they haven't done their homework on. And then you have to manage that, that tenant. Okay. So it does not happen to us. Yeah, and again, from my own personal experience, I've, I've had both, and, and again, with, with experience, you know, you get far better tenants, and, you know, you, I've got cash flow positive properties that are not in the sub 300,000 Rand bracket, just as an example. Um, Rienk um, de Vries has said, all those doomsayers don't realize what's going on in the EU and America and totally unaffordable social security nets. I'm glad I left and came to South Africa. Much better possibilities here. So <laughs> thanks for that. Voila. Uh, Luis uh, Rebello has said, what alternative do we have in the market to raise funds when the banks are making it possible to lend? I have many properties, all of which are cash flow and in trust, but the banks still want my personal proof of income. I'm not employed and look after my investments there's no fixed income. If you do have access bonds on them, uh, then you can become almost like your own bank. Other than that, I can't really help you. Simon, so Simon has said, uh, what percentage of gearing do you recommend for a portfolio as a rule of thumb? I haven't got rule of thumbs. Okay. Can I pay, uh, there's a lot of people offering to buy your Apple here. <laughs> 
Okay, if they give me the right price, uh, the first one I can take it. Jobert uh, says, to what extent does your program make provision for maintenance and expenses on property? 100%. Yeah, I mean, again, everything is there. All the variables are there. We even, uh, years ago, when, when Hannes and I were presenting this in London, we even changed it so that the tax could be changed between England, Australia, etc. So it is fully compatible with, with both local and international markets. Okay, uh, boom, boom, boom. Johan says, if the bank does not grant a loan on what is a good investment according to Property Pro program, would you buy it with cash from equity on previous property and later register a bond over the one bought cash? Sort of a trick, the banks, if you understand the question. I understand the question because I've done it several times. Yeah, so, so my answer there is yes, on condition that you know what you're doing. Sometimes the banks are totally, totally stupid because they, they get the fright of their lives the moment that we turn into a situation like that. And if you've got the, the, the cash available on your access bonds or somewhere else, then buy the thing. Uh, I, I mean, it's still going to, it's, it's an incredible investment. And you know the opportunity, and then the markets will turn around, maybe five years, maybe seven years, maybe tomorrow. I've got no idea. And then when the banks are stupid again and start giving money out left, right, and center, you, you, you simply take it because you have to manage your own risk. And obviously, you know what you're doing if you're sitting in a situation like that. So uh, I, I, it, it's something that, I, that I, that's also part of the course where I tell people what I've done because I, I like to play open cards. Paul Lotto said, surely the property pro formula as shown will only show good figures in a rising market, but in a falling market, the figures will look negative. Absolutely. Because, well, shit, uh, you know the program, uh, Scott. Uh, it, 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 it gives you the reality. It's the closest to the reality that you can possibly get. Look, at the end, so of, the day, at the end of the day, Hannes, I think the best way to describe that is it's exactly the same as, as Excel. You know, if you put the right figures in, then you can, you can get the right results out. But you can also get anything you want out on Excel if you put rubbish in in the beginning. Absolutely. That's why the fundamental side is so important and that's why it's so important to, to do it according to the way that I instruct you to do it. Mark Lunai says, I agree tenant management is not difficult if done properly. I'm doing it for a living. Uh, Nuki, Nuki, Fabulous. Nuki says, how in the world would, you, would one get income from a property? <laughs> Learn the skills. I think the best the best thing there is um, is the is that whole uh, beginning section on how to invest in property that Hannes has spoken about, and it will take you through the fundamentals of property and and it's perfect. We've all been through the different stages, so if you're at the beginning stage and trying to understand it, fantastic. And hats off to you. You really you know you you're far ahead of many, many other people. But if you do that, then you I agree. Can learn how that actually works, basically. I agree, hundred percent, there, Scott. Um, okay, Grant Barnes Webb, I've answered your question. Uh, we actually designed it in 2004, 2005, the property pro system to take into account the tax in South Africa, the Oz and the UK, and you do have the ability to change that. Asraf said, where's the best place to find cheapies? Property pays for itself. Hannes, do you have a database of property I can buy now if I want? No, I do not have, but I'll advise you to go to that link that Scott has given you, uh, Kristen, at IPS, uh, IPS, IPS Invest, uh, and then uh, .com, and uh, they'll take it from there. Uh, there is a, uh, I closed the, the property investments three years ago, and uh, I'm not going to go into that, but at the moment you can buy uh, properties directly on auctions for far better than trying to negotiate uh, to take over the, the outstanding bonds. Johan says, can I start the mentoring program and will it still make sense in today's market? Uh, I've revamped and I'm busy revamping for all my, uh, the Wealth Creators University students, uh, uh, it, and actually now you'll be able to learn 10 times more than in the beginning because we take like a post-mortem, why did I do certain things? Uh, that's if you in on the Wealth Creators University. Uh, but yes, uh, the principles apply and it's still applicable and it will be over the next 30 years, I think. 
Nkandu said, how would you analyze properties in a new development area, e.g. properties off plan, which have no 10-year history data to be utilized? Nkandu, you go back to your property. I hope it's the same Nkandu that I'm thinking. That is one of the Wealth Creators University students. You tackle the Property Pro uh, program and uh, I'm going to give you the answer in that course. So uh, please do that and then come back and give me the answer because you, you know uh, what the answer is. Paul Blows has said, uh, yes, Hannes, I am looking for stones. Tell students really great value. I paid much more for all of that. So thanks for that, Paul. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but uh, Paul was an auditor. That's why <laughs> he's saying that. Uh, but thanks, Paul. Bob said, thank you. Fran Allison said, can you elaborate on the auction process? Um, I can, Fran. Can but you do that? It's look. It is. It is. Uh, it is quite late this evening. But let me just show you something very quickly, which I think will will add quite a bit of value. Uh, sorry, just two seconds. Let me just get there quickly. There we are. Okay. There's basically five steps in the process, and I've got a whole webinar on this that I can email to you. But the number one step of the process is where the homeowner is battling. The number two stage is where you get into the distress process. So this is where the banks. You haven't actually paid up, up for 90 days. The banks start the whole legal process and they call this the distressed seller process. Stage three is no man's land where the basically the homeowner or the or investor now gets a letter that he's going to get basically go to sheriff's auction. Stage four is where it goes to sheriff's auction called sale and execution. And stage five is where the bank actually buys the property back. It's known as PIP. And, and the reason that there's two in yellow is that the best two from an investment perspective are stage three and stage five, primarily because of transparency, but there's a lot of other things there. Unfortunately, as I said, I've got a whole webinar that I'm happy to email you or anyone else that wants this, but hopefully that gives you a guideline of the five stages that are involved, basically. Okay, um, Jason has said, okay, no, hang on two seconds there. Jason likes to talk, so I've just got to read through all his emails and see all his things. Uh, okay, um, Jason, uh, thanks for all the comments. I don't think there's a question there. Yasafat says, thank you very much. It was really helpful. You guys are great. Jason says, or shall I say, when you get to the realization. Okay, so Jason basically is just talking that he's learned a lot of this stuff from, uh, from experience. Charles has said, why do banks not consider the full rental amount as income only about 70 percent the banks are looking at their risk they they're not interested in you and your stories they 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 want to cover themselves so they bring in their own rules and regulations uh, good or bad that's the way that it works which areas does Hannes consider no go I'm not going to but. tell you find out that for yourself do the the calculations and and do um, uh, it would be totally unfair for me to tell you which areas not to invest. M maybe I've got properties there, and if I want to get rid of those properties, or uh, so the moment that I start telling you what to do and where to do it, uh, there may be hidden agenda behind it. And for that reason, I think it's unfair even to ask a question like that. Just a just a very quick one on that on that bank financing because I think this is fascinating. And again, I don't have time to go into a lot of detail, but the bottom line is if the banks have a bond over a property and it's a bad debt in their eyes and you come along, they'll give you far more attractive financing, better loans, values, and they'll also write off a portion of the debt that the seller has. So you really need to understand how this process works because it, you can get far better loans, values um, if the bank considers you to be a better loan than the guy who's currently got the bond. Just, uh, just to give you some uh, interest there, basically. Okay, so let me just, uh, sorry, I just want to come back to, there's, uh, just for those of you who are still online, there's, um, there's two sayings there that I absolutely love. And I really think that uh, what Jim Rohn saying there is a lot of what Hannes was saying in terms of the wealth creator strategy and how you get to financial freedom and where you want to get to. Let's, uh, Nicholas has said, yeah, what should you do to your property to get a higher market rental. Nicholas, there's many, many things that you can do there. There's a lot of books on it that you can read.
but the bottom line is you've got to look the best way in property is you've got to look for an alternative and, and do something to enhance the property that someone else hasn't seen. Uh, as an example, in London, I had a three-bedroom home. I put a conservatory on it, turned it into a five-bedroom home, and managed to earn another one and a half thousand pounds uh, positive income on top of what I was really getting from that property. Um, and I'm sure, Hannes, you've got loads of examples. That that really, you know, that that's the psychology and the skill set of being able to improve your properties. Um, do you, uh, Nicholas says, do you think small offices will be needed in the future as more and more businesses are going online or people working from home? I think you should be careful for offices. Um, three or four years ago that was the in thing. Uh, I've said at that stage offices follow residential and uh, commercial follow residential in terms of the cycles. Uh, they, 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 they start later and they keep on looking like a good investment for, for longer. Uh, but uh, I think if you look at what happens, I'm, I'm not sitting in an office at the moment, I'm sitting in my house. I don't need any office and I need my computer and I think really it's going to be something that more and more people will start to do. I've been doing this now for the last, what, 11, 12 years. Um, so um, when people start getting the hang of it that you can work anywhere in the world, I, I can literally have done this uh, from my farm, uh, although that would be difficult because I haven't got, uh, but it would be uh, uh, possible. You, you you can do it from anywhere. So uh, I think offices, uh, I'll be careful at this stage to, to take a long-term uh, strategy in terms of office. Nicholas, if you followed me on Twitter, I was at SAPOA, which is the South African Property Owners Association on Friday, and world trends are that IBM, more than 50% of IBM employees now work from home. Um, I think really you just got to look at long-term trends. Just like Hannah said, I'm now living and working out of my home, cho choosing to live down in Cape Town. Um, I honestly believe that the future, and particularly the younger generations, are not going to put up with commuting and, and working out of stuffy offices and having to sit in traffic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, that, that's, that's our opinion, but yeah. Um, a couple of people have said that they've already mailed Lilu, which is nice for them. They they can take advantage. Uh, Jason says that I think most people are lured into property investment with the so-called capital growth. From this presentation, I take you invest for income. Jason, I think that was my biggest lesson from the global financial crisis and watching from the biggest funds to the individual property investors. Those guys that went after income are not only still around but a lot more successful, and those that went after capital growth are no longer here, and that doesn't matter if they're individual investors or literally some of the biggest property funds in the world, and property syndications, and, and, and. Zaid, after expenses, my property brings in 4000 according to the Mercedes principle. Do I reinvest a third of that in the next property? Uh, that depends on your standard of living and what you want to achieve, um, but according to serious principle, you're right. Jason says, how do you prevent getting yourself in, into a distressed state? Earn more income and do some of my other courses. <laughs> and I think also the Mercedes principle, Hannah. Uh, Absolutely. Um, I'd be interested in this webinar. Oh, okay, sorry, these are people. I'll send you the link to the, to the auction webinar, that's fine. Jan said, please send me the webinar on the five stages. Heidi, please send me. Uh, will I copy that? Okay, please send me an email. Uh, Don't sorry. the people want to go and sleep? I see there's still Andres on. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, hang on. Just sorry, I'm just there. Uh, lots of people asking for the email. I'll send everyone that's asked for the email the email. Hannes, uh, this is from Johan. I was on the first. I was one of the first students when you started seminars on the Property Pro program and still very young back then and also bought Property Investment Advanced Course DVD said, I've done some property investments but probably not following your techniques and training 100%. I've decided to take action again. Finished watching the DVD set past weekend. Interested in Wild Coast University. Any special perhaps? Yeah, for you, just because you ask, uh, do me a favor and tomorrow um, send your email to Lilu and then 
say, say to her that because you've stick it out for more than two hours, that I'm going to give you a definite, uh, she must come to me and, and uh, I'll see what you've done and I will give you a, a serious special because you, you, you absolutely deserve it. That's Johan Jacobs just as you recognize the name. Um, okay. Willy, I will remember you. Willy Latakhan says, Johannes, do you still believe that property is the only way to financial freedom? No, I've never said that property is the only way. I said the property is a wonderful way. There are better ways that, to financial freedom. The best way to financial freedom is to invest in yourself and to learn certain skill sets or specific skill sets. Uh, that's, I think, what I've said from the beginning. But property, yeah, uh, if you've got a surplus, it's a fabulous, fabulous tool on condition that you do it right and on condition that you only see it as investment and don't become too emotionally attached to it and really understand how property works. Francis, really appreciate all the info. You guys rock. Zaid says, thank you. Jason, you asked about the Mercedes principle. That is all covered in the property training system. Ben Euster, please send the webinar. Mark, I see from midnight maybe. Neil says, please email links on all the webinars as discussed. Porus says, hi Scott, please. <laughs> okay, sorry guys, I'm just reading through this. Uh, send the webinar. Okay, guys, I'll send the link to everyone. That's fine. Um, Luval, can we go to sleep now, Heather? Uh, sorry, guys, I'm just reading these as they're coming in. Hannes, thank you very much for. Okay, Jan uh, has said, Hannes and Scott, thank you very much for your time and sharing. Uh, what other non property investments does Hannes have or property only? From Mark. I only invest in, in my own businesses and in property. Uh, Grandbard's web says, does uh, your executive package include any sort of tax advice with regards to properties? Yeah, in the trust uh, course, a lot of tax, uh, n not necessarily advice, but strategies that you can use, as well as in the advanced course, as well as in the uh, property pro course. So uh, really extensive, uh, it's, it's, it's a strategy, it's, it's not tax advice as such, so you still have to go, but you'll know how to do it. Okay, then Heinz says, would you suggest working in a group and in this way increase your surplus and decrease your risk? No, I will not because the group will not follow and the group normally, um, uh, the one is going, is going to know a hell of a lot better than the other one and they will start telling you what to do. If you can get the growth, the rather get that growth on your, on, on your own and then you don't need other people. So one of the first basic things is invest in yourself so that you take full responsibility for your life. Because if you're going to be in a group and you know what is best and the group, because they don't know what is best, decides against you, you're going to be stuck for the rest of your life uh, listening to other people that knows nothing. So rather learn that skill yourself and um, you'll thank me later on for that. Paul Richardson said, said thanks guys, awesome evening, take care. Um, Mohammed, guys, everyone, don't worry, I'll send you the links. Slavin said, "Do uh, uh, this is a great question. Do you do internet business seminars? Property are great. I've been in them for the last 18 years, but feel internet is great with low entry level. What is your take on it, seeing that the internet business, seeing that your internet business with courses as well is set up? Absolutely. Uh, we've got courses on the internet. Go to build dash a dash web dot com and you see what I mean or go to control center marketing and uh, fabulous courses and with fabulous info information and then just um, I apologize if I pronounce this wrong Kashi Faf uh, Hannes and Scott listening to your webinar I feel richer already thanks I'll definitely start investing in property again after a long five year break um, and maybe that, it was a good break <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, I think we are finally there. Uh, I've got to the end of 204 questions. Dave Endelson said, thank you very much, guys. Webinar is hugely valuable and great to get some hard-hitting and candid advice. Um, so on that note, unless anyone has uh, any more pertinent questions that they want to come through, we really appreciate the thanks. Um, it, it makes it all worth it from, from our side. I know I speak for, for Hannes on that side. But I also want to thank you guys. It's phenomenal to have uh, so many of you online tonight, and it's so great for you guys to interact because these questions 
add so much more value to to everyone else. So certainly from my side, I want to thank you for for your time tonight. I hope that it's been of a lot of value. And Hannes, thank you so much for for taking time out yourself and allowing me to ask you those questions and to sort of interrogate you as to the thoughts because I know that a lot of the questions going through my head are are being asked by a lot of people out there. And so hopefully by me asking you these questions, it's helped a lot of other people. Scott, do you know what? What's that? I really enjoyed it. So it was great, it was fun. And to each and every one that has asked questions and that has been on this webinar, I really and truly hope that it adds value. And as you properly have heard, I, I wanted to be straightforward and honest with you because I think there's too much bullshit going on and it's time that, that people start taking responsibility and uh, that we get uh, that responsibility back to our own hands and to our own pockets and uh, the fact that you've been on the webinar tonight tells me that you really want to get ahead in life and I first of all congratulate you for that and secondly I want to thank you that you were willing at least to listen to us. Uh, thanks, it was really a privilege to be on this webinar. Cool guys and thanks to everyone. Uh, we will send you emails to follow up. So from uh, late, uh, late Tuesday evening and love to see all the energy, it's really been awesome. I'm going to sign off now. If you've got any further questions, I will follow up with an email. If you've got any further questions, let me know and I will direct you in the right direction. Have a fantastic evening. Hannes, thank you very much. So from Let's Talk Property, to everyone out there tonight, thank you very much and take some action because at the end of the day, it's the action that will determine your destiny and hopefully Hannes has given you lots of tools to be able to have whatever you want in your life tonight. So thank you very much. Cheers, guys. Thanks and good night.